welcome to the Spot Real Talk. My name is Tiara. I'm Tiffany. I'm Lawanda. And I'm Ron. And today we are here to discuss The Shy, the season three, episode six, titled Woo Woo Woo. <laughs> <laughs> you guys hang tight. We'll be right back with you. All right, so we are back, and like I said, this is episode three, um, sorry, season three, episode six, um, and I really like the opening of this episode. How did you guys feel about the opening scene and, and kind of like the flashback um, because we talked last week about Keisha and her mental state and how she might be now that she's back in captivity. <laughs> Thanks to her. <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> I, I mean, I the the opening was cool. I you know I got past the opening. It was nice. You know, I I think my um, my heightened state was let's see what Ronnie does now that he's near the house and possibly he may find Keisha, you know, so I was really anticipating that moment. But mm -hmm. much to my chagrin, uh, Ronnie goes in, discovers that a, a sound or a, a, a noise, somebody screaming, he goes up to the, you know, vent, he can hear something, he, and I'm, I'm sure he heard screaming, uh, but he wisely gets out of the house because he's about to get clocked. Mm -hmm. And, you know, after that, it's, Ronnie's nowhere to be found. He does nothing. He doesn't go to police station, doesn't go to Dre, which I would have loved for him to do, because I would love to see what Dre was going to come through with. And yes, Tiffany, <laughs> I hear you. I hear everything you said, which I know you're going to say in a second. But Ronnie, the writing, y'all done messed me up a little bit this time. I'm a little messed up. Well, Tiffany, you had a thought about that that we kind of spoke about off camera. Yeah, I mean, I, I hear what Ron is saying, but basically when he heard the screaming, the uh, the kidnapper wisely put the tea kettle on to camouflage the screaming. So when he came downstairs, he was like, oh, okay, so that's perhaps that's what I heard. And like you said, he was about to get clocked. I mean, he didn't know he was about to get clocked, but he was about to get clocked. Mm -hmm. So I, I think you know, this is not the end of the, the story. I, I feel like, um, you know, I know we'll talk about the grandmother situation later, but I feel like they're building Ronnie up to be the hero because he's had so much loss and everything in his life. It, it, he'll get his day. Okay. Yeah. I, I thought it was a good way to open it up the, um, the scene with her reminiscing about her brother's birthday. I was surprised and shocked to, to understand it. I guess she's still oriented in time to know that it is his birthday. I, I was thinking that. the same thing. I was like, she knows what day it is. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, that, that, was, that was one thing. And then um, it's kind of like you can feel like they're stretching this out. And in yeah. some ways it kind of seems illogical because I'm with Ron. It's no way he didn't hear that scream in the vent. Exactly. I just, mm -hmm. I just don't know how you I get know, around that. We know the difference between a tea kettle and a screen. Yeah. Well, he can way, you. I thought they are stretching it out. He turned the TV all the way up too, so that could have helped disguise some of it. Because yeah. Ryan's the one with the the third level, the second level above ground, and Keisha's mm -hmm. all the way in the basement. So if you have the TV and the teapot going, mm -hmm. and you have two floors in between you. It's possible. I don't know, yeah. but she got a but voice. I think she has a voice. Suspicious. She has a voice like Tiffany. If Tiffany got kidnapped and I was in that house <laughs> and she started screaming, I don't care what floor she would be on, I would hurt. Tiffany <laughs> just had to be the example. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was going to say, so if Ron, if Ron is using this episode to throw shade, I see. <laughs> <laughs> it's all love, but I'm just going to say, I don't care where you'd be in that house, I would have heard you. Yeah. And you know, she was screaming. She was screwed. I'm scared for Keisha though, because um the that whole situation with Omari coming in and you know brushing her hair and, and cut brushing her hair from creepy. the root, mind you. I'm like, how you taking a natural girl and brushing her from the root? You gotta start at the ends. <laughs> 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 well then um, I just I, I just thought it was creepy. I was like, he is yeah. creeping me out. I mean, especially when he started talking about his the other girl. The the yeah. crush that he had and all this other yeah. stuff. Yeah. And I was like, this guy is weird. Yeah. He's sick. 
And I hope Ronnie had... felt that too. I think Ronnie felt that. I don't think he's going to forget that that guy I don't think so. gave him the creeps. But, you know, in reality's sake, though, I mean, just for the sake of reality, you know, every day counts. Every moment counts. He's mm -hmm. already upset with her because now she's tried on a couple of occasions to escape. So uh -huh. in the reality of things, you'd want to get her out of there sooner rather than later. So, mm -hmm. you know, I don't know how many hours or days represent an episode. You know, it could be just hours um, before he does something. But I think he's going to try to get some evidence. Because when you think about Ronnie, Ronnie is a homeless person. And when you think about the police and everything, they don't, they don't give a lot of credence to a regular person let alone somebody who's homeless. Yeah. That's why I said get Dre. Dre would have gone up in there, and I'm going to tell you, there would have been some movement up in that house. Somebody yeah, would have been moving. Yeah, because well, she's becoming a, dis you know, she's bringing attention to the house at this point. You know, mm -hmm. she, she ran out, she screamed, and now somebody's come to follow up on the screen, and the guy can't dismiss that. He can't oh, dismiss no. that somebody showed up at his door, homeless or not, needing to use the re restroom or not. Somebody tied that screen to that house. Exactly. Right. And he even you all recognize forward. Omari from previous episodes? The yeah, what, that's, didn't yeah. Emmett give him the um, the flyer? Yeah, that, that was a guy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That was I a was guy. just wondering if um, everybody caught that because I know you had sent us an article earlier this week saying that mm -hmm. whoever the kidnapper was has already appeared. So my, my eyes were peeled trying to piece everything back together. Mm -hmm. Um. But while we're talking about um, Ronnie, so Ronnie, he had a, a outing with his grandma where he was taking her back to a club that she used to own back in the day. But uh, much to his surprise, it is no longer a jazz club. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know what? <laughs> there was a little hint that something was amiss. Because I don't know, did y'all see the title? And uh, it said, uh, what was it? What's the name of the thing? Foxy's. It was supposed to say Foxy's Cocktail Lounge, but the tail was missing. So it read Foxy's Cock Lounge. Oh, no, I missed oh, okay. that. I missed there, was a, I missed there was a big hit right there that <laughs> things were amiss. It was different, huh? Was different. Yeah, a little different. Well, Grandma didn't seem to mind. <laughs> Grandma oh. got her entire oh, life. No, no. Now I'm mad at her. Grandma fell into place real quick. I mean, first she was a little upset, you know, but she got over that up. That real quick, you know, she had that hard body on her and she was all in it. I mean, she and gave everybody up in there a history lesson, too. She sure did. Yeah, that's what I, I think that was the the best moment in the show for me, mm -hmm. uh, you know, because she 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 schooled everybody, you know, and I like the way that they were listening to, you know, the older statesmen about what the club was about, yada, yada. Even her reverence. Exactly. Exactly. I like that. Me too. She oh, reminded me of my nana. I was like, my nana is a lot like her. Always trying to be be sharp, and she would yeah. talk to me about those the olden days, the people she met, like Billy Holiday and Cab Calloway and things, and not going out without a lip. When she said, "Oh, I gotta have my lip stick done," I was like, "Oh, that's, I was like, that's my nana." <laughs> yeah, it was comical. It was funny. Yeah. yeah. It was cute. Um, and it's it's really heartwarming too because we've seen how evil she has been to Ron, Ronnie previously. So the fact that she's been like really warming back up to him and, and treating himself nicely and then to have him take her back to the nursing home and she passed in her sleep, it was like, dang, Ronnie. Like every time stuff goes good for him, he gets knocked like 10 steps back. Yeah, yeah she, I kind of felt like that was coming because you heard her when she left the club and she was like, oh, I'm ready to go home now. So I kind of felt like that was coming. Yeah. When she said it's cold in here, mm -hmm. that, that, that already that was, I was like, uh oh. Yeah, that was yeah. it for me. Because when she said that, I said, Oh, she's getting ready to go. She's getting ready to go. So hey. Yeah, that was sad. I was just it was like, sad. Why you just keep getting kicked while he's down. That's yeah. why I believe he's gonna come out on top. Well, I hope yeah, so. Because... I think they 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 built, you know, all these things are happening to him for a reason, and he's gonna be the victor. Watch. And that but to Ron's that was... point. Ron had a good point. Go ahead, Ron, and <laughs> jump in because what you said to uh, off screen, you had me thinking like, ah, well, maybe. I, well, I mean, the whole point being that I I hear you, Tiff. That you know, but the first of all, the pot kettle and the scream. I mean, let's assume that the <laughs> so level <bad>. of <laughs> 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 oh, okay. all right. because. 
Ronnie had a good point, though. I was going to say, okay, I mean, if Ronnie had actually heard the screams, how could you ignore that for the whole day and go out gallivanting with Grandma? I mean, You're I would have rather had... I think it's... Go ahead, Ron. I would have rather had seen Ronnie on the corner with a bottle than to have literally forgotten what he thought he heard. Now, I get it. I get the the, the the pot, the tea kettle, and all this other jazz. I get that. But Ronnie knew. I mean, first of all, he could feel that something was wrong. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. know, you could see that in him when he went upstairs, he mm -hmm. was moving around. When he mm -hmm. heard what he thought he heard, he could have either ignored it or, you know, done what he did, which was, I know it's coming from somewhere. Let me, let me, let me get up there and see. And when he got up and heard from the vent, he heard her screaming, and she wasn't. The young lady has a very high pitched voice anyway. So she can out scream a tea kettle. And, you know, I'm just thinking, okay, maybe he's going to, you know, get out of there like he needs to get out of there because we all know he was about to get clocked. So he gets mm -hmm. out of there, and I'm thinking, I'm waiting, I'm waiting. Every second of the show, I'm waiting for somebody to come back with Ronnie to investigate this thing. But we get nothing. Maybe the next episode, because he, maybe he's going to yeah. come back with reinforcements, because, probably, you know, the white, the white dude already beat him up a, a couple episodes ago. <laughs> yeah. So Ronnie needs reinforcements. Look, Ronnie military. So, you know, you take... Ronnie was military when white dude beat him up a couple weeks ago. <laughs> yeah. He needs reinforcements. He needs to come back with some folks that can help. <laughs> I think they're setting the stage for him to do something because mm -hmm. now he has nothing to lose, right? So he's no. gonna do something that's very risky. That's but at exactly the same my time, point. something's yeah. gonna set him back. Like now we gotta see how he's gonna how is he gonna deal with the death of his grandmother. But that's right? the point. Because now he truly is not anchored. He has nothing to lose at this point. So one, we gotta see how is he gonna react? Is that gonna set him back or is that gonna make him more and more determined? But that's I point. think so. Think about it. That's what grandma wanted for him. Grandma yeah. told him, you'll find her. So that's, I think that's, the point. that's going to be a motivating factor for him. Mm -hmm. That's going to really drive him. Like, watch. But see, what I see in that, and Lawanda, you got a point, but what I see in that is, you know, his grandmother was extremely important to him. And I, I think on the one hand, he was glad to have been there when she, you know, went to, you know, passed on. But for an alcoholic like Ronnie has been through the whole uh, uh, seasons, that's a setback. And, you know, the first thing you do is you go back to what makes you feel comfortable, which is that bottle. So I can definitely see this dragging out to, to, to the end of the uh, season because it, he had a devastating loss. And how does he deal with that immediately after is going to determine what he does as it relates to Keisha, as far as I'm concerned. Well, let's hope yeah. that the pastor will be mm. a guide for him. Because remember, he said, if you let me um, help you guide, help guide you to start to hear God more and have a relationship with God. So he does have somebody in his corner that can help him and aid him through this process. That's sure. true. Yeah. Now, what are you going to say? No, no. I, I just said, let's hope he uses it. Oh, okay. Um, I want to switch gears for a second here and talk about Tiffany and Emmett this week. Um, so they go to this dispensary, which we, we later find out is owned by a familiar face from the past, Brandon's cousin. Right. Um, and so I thought that the writing was good there and the mm -hmm. fact that they are not forgetting characters that we, you know, we were like, what happened to such and such? Where is so and so? Mm -hmm. um, there's still a couple of people that were like, okay, what? Where are they? The, the two detectives, what happened to them? So um, even Brandon's cousin, just seeing him pop back, back up this episode was good. Um, mm -hmm. They had left him out. Um, and so Emmett is in there trying to negotiate with him on Tiffany's behalf to get her some kind of like wholesale volume price for uh, her, her, her um, marijuana business. <laughs> and they actually do work it out. Um, and eventually they end up at the, one of Tiffany's clients who is a, uh, psychic and the, the outlook that he had for them is not pretty. And this kind of goes back to what we've been speculating all along that Emmett is not going to be able to stay away from Dom. Yeah. No, he's yeah. not going to be able to be faithful. We knew that. We, we need the psychic. 
<laughs> yeah, we didn't need Terracons. We didn't need Terracons to tell us what's going to happen. Right. You know, but again, Emmett, I like Emmett. I really do. I mean, I, I like, you know, I like his, I like his street hood mannerisms. I mean, in the sense of when it comes to business. I mean, hustling. I think, yeah, he's a hustler. Yep. Yes, he is. He's a straight hustler. I like that in him. I just think that he needs to learn how to put things together because here he is. I mean, out of the blue, he he works up a situation for his girlfriend, right? He he he, he he's enabling her to turn a profit on 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 um, you know on what what she was doing in, in terms of selling uh, selling wheat. But that was it, you know. Ronnie takes some business courses. I mean, uh, Emmett takes some business courses and learn to tie that thing together completely, mm -hmm. you know, because because yeah. I think. Um, uh, Tiff kind of said something about that as they were walking away, more or less saying that, you know, you, you're so impulsive that you just jump into things and, and, and there's no, there's no. He's not uh, grounded in anything. Yeah, it, there's no beginning, middle and end. You just jump mm -hmm. in and what come what may. And basically he agreed with that. Yeah, he needs some guidance. Mm -hmm. yeah, he needs a little guidance. He needs a little guidance. I was hoping to see. Uh, I was actually hoping to see Brandon's uh, ex uh, running that um, uh, weed shop. I mean, Derek, I, I, I know Derek was too straight and narrow for that. She I know. I know that, that would have been. Yeah, I was gonna been. say I couldn't see that. No, but think, but you know what? There's a lot of people doing it. You know, yeah. in in real life, yeah. Shawnee O'Neal yeah. has dispensary. Mm -hmm. The game, Snoop, like all these people have dispensaries. It's, it's a thing. It's a business. Yeah, and it's a big look. What's his name that used to be the speaker of the house? John Boehner is in the weed business now. Right, right. He was so opposed when he was in Congress. Exactly. There you go. Well, you know, opinions are changing on, on that subject. Mm -hmm. So, um, Well, next I want to talk about Jake and Trig. Um, mm. Because they have a very rocky relationship. And it seems like this whole situation with Otis is really going to make Jake realize where he needs to be um and so this week we see that you know trick calls jake over because apparently reg had this stash of money somewhere and they're trying to figure out where it is um and then like they're playing basketball together and otis has his men trailing them like kind of watching um every move they make and eventually they do end up at wherever this money is hidden they find the money but Sure enough, I mean, Otis's men were on it, and, and Trig had to take one of them out. But Trig also revealed some stuff to Jake, letting him know it was Otis that actually killed uh, Rage. And mm -hmm. so with Otis and all the nonsense he has going on this episode, it's not looking good for him. No. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. You know, I'm already put him on Front Street on national TV. Yeah. His mom would have outed him. So it's really not looking good when you have your mom endorsing your opponent. And his wife was really right. I mean, he needed to get up on it right away. He does eventually. Mm -hmm. but, um, she was right. You can't let that just hang out and mm -hmm. fester because it's like an open wound. You know, that thing can get, you know, infected and your your campaign is done. But dude has got to calm that 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 uh, hostility down. I mean, his wife was actually better for him than anybody else. I mean, she knows him. She and she seems to understand the game, and he won't let her do what she has to do. You know. Well, he tried to spin the situation with his mom by saying she was mentally ill and trying to use that as you know a campaign point. But that's getting well, on top of it, though. That's what he should have done, and that and I'm mm -hmm. sure, that's, and that's what his wife might have had had even said he should do, you know, get on top of it, discredit your mom, uh, and, you know, move forward. But, you know, she was trying to pay off, you know, when she, we saw her trying to pay off moms and then, you know, do the steps in and he catches it. And, you know, here again, he's, you know, terribly upset with uh, his wife and she's only trying to help him. And Otis also threw Camille way under the bus this episode and his little, um, his campaign ad when he was outing her for what she was doing in the church. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it seems like that, I mean, politics is a dirty game. Yeah, know? I can say nobody clean. Exactly. Yeah. I get, you know, what I see about his character is that you now you understand, like, we got a little bit of his backstory. Now we see his mother 
So oh my I gosh, you you're saying what I was just getting ready to say. I was just waiting for a moment. <laughs> well, just like you know, you can understand if you have a mother like that that will sell you out and has such a low uh, view of you. How 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 would you expect for him to turn out? And then I also see his relationship too with the wife of that him wanting to have control. I got this. Not wanting to have somebody interfere because I could see in that situation he probably didn't have a lot of control growing up. And who knows what he went through? You know. Now you see that, um, and I can see why trust is an issue for him too. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, all of this story is starting to come together. And yeah, he may be a little aggressive. I'll use that word lightly, <laughs> aggressive. But now I understand why. It humanizes him. He may not be such a, a bad character after all. Because there's a reason behind him doing what he does. Mm -hmm. And it seems like that way for everybody. I mean, we, we've seen Ronnie's progression and how he went from the bad guy to us getting more backstory, understanding him. Um, even with Reg and, and all of the other characters, even down the trig, we're, we're getting backstory. And so it's like, okay, we can't crucify these people because they are kind of justified in the way that they turned out. Look what they've been through. Look at their circumstances. And then yeah. his opponent, she's not clean either, right? That's they what I said. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. I was going to piggyback on what you said, Lawanda, because when I was watching it, I was just like, wow, you see these these men and they're they're complicated. And then you when you see their mothers and their backstory, you want you understand how they are. They made me think about power. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. because I thought about Dre. Because yeah. you know, after we saw that episode with Dre's mom, then you were like, Oh, Dre didn't have a chance. Mm -hmm. You know, the yeah. way his mom kind of threw him away mm -hmm. and, and everything. And I see the same with, with Duda, because I was just like, Wow, you know, Duda is, you know, he he is a trip, but Listen to his mom and how she threw him under the bus and how she talked about him. I was like, mm, there's a reason why he's the way he is. Yeah. Yeah. And that's why I don't know if, if I was Jake, if I would want to be in that situation. Um, well, I think he's been off with Trig for real. Because Trig definitely gave him an ultimatum this week. Yeah, but Trig, I mean, you know. He, but Trig got his own stuff. Yeah. It ain't, it ain't all great. Yeah, all it's, it's not pretty, but at least he wants to be, you know, he's got uh, everybody after Trig, Trig has everybody after him yeah. now. You know, after taking out uh, one of Duda's, uh, yeah. uh, you know, hit hit hitmen, and then you got what's that, Sixty Third Street? They're after him. So mm -hmm. I don't know, Jake. He's, might. Vi he's volatile. Jake needs to be emancipated. <laughs> he <laughs> <laughs> emancipated, right? <laughs> really have good options. At this point, it don't sound like either option is is too much better than the other. <laughs> I, exactly, it's a, it's a it's a coin toss. And Trig is a little confused as well. So that's going to be something he still has yeah. to come to grips with his mm -hmm. own situation. That's true. He's going to have to be able to explain that to Jake. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's true. Yeah. Um, well, I want to talk about Kevin this episode because you know it's his birthday, and so we kind of caught that um early on with Keisha's uh flashback. But even throughout the episode, we get to see Kevin on his journey throughout his day. I'm um, going skating with Gemma, and oh, um, I wanted to skate, and that was my song too. I, I yeah. was about to say okay. they definitely made me want to get up the uh skating rink somewhere <laughs> without my skates. I did um, have aha in honor of their tradition. <laughs> <laughs> the pancakes. I, yeah, you know, I did. I, I had some pancakes. <laughs> I, you know, I kind of said to myself, I hope Kevin kind of cools it down a bit. I know he's quite upset about his sister and all, but the way he came after Gemma, you know, she was trying to explain, you know, he, you know, she was yeah. coming clean and he just blew up. I, I got it. You know, I mean, I'm not saying that he had, didn't have a reason for it, but, you know, you got to understand who you're with. And you know, just take everything into consideration. But he just blew up so much, and and, and he's, he's a, a kid. Of, he's yeah. about what, fourteen, fourteen, mm -hmm. fifteen? Uh, yeah, yeah. So, so I, I mean, mean, it's to be expected. Those preteen mood swings, and you know, everything I mean, he's into the world for them. He's grief. He ha he's not really dealing with it. You know, or he doesn't it's, want to. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. He's, he's suppressing it exactly. and everything, and so. Yeah, I, I can see why it's happening. And I see Gemma is like the complete opposite because she wants to cope, like she wants to address the situation. She's already consulted, you know, some her, her friends and her parents. And so I feel like she is more of a person that wants to deal with the situation where with so many 
people that are in our neighborhoods that are in, you know, situations where they don't have access to the kind of mental care that they need. Mm-hmm. They tend to suppress, and that's very common. It's like mm-hmm. I'm gonna either pray about it or I'm gonna keep it to myself, and it's like suppressing. But whereas Gemma, she's more well off, she probably diff- um, used to coping, you know, in, in this type of way where we talk things out and we work through our problems. So you can access see that the therapist. No economic <laughs> difference. Yeah, right. and then you know, plus the fact that she's she has her parents to talk to, and that's- so you know, so she's gonna have that. So she understands how to deal with. Um, that kind of pressure far better than Kevin does. But we and got think public- about it, how you guys are. Yeah, I mean, a lot of y'all guys are. Y- y'all know that when when things go wrong, uh, you know, some men talk about it, but a lot of men don't want to talk about it. I don't, don't want to go to no yeah. therapist. I don't know about stuff. that. And, I talk, and y'all, no, I'll stop it. Y'all know y'all can act out sometimes. I run my mouth. I, no, no, I run my mouth. I'm not, I'm, <laughs> you got a problem with me? I got a problem. We are gonna know about the problem because I will See, talk. you wanted it. You want it. You're the minority. I'm not like most guys. I'm telling you right now, I will talk your head off. If I got a problem, you're going to know about it, good, bad, or <laughs> indifferent. Yeah, there are some guys like that, but a lot of guys don't want to talk about stuff. I mean, especially when they're going through stuff. It, you know, they may suppress okay. things. And, and a lot of folks, especially in our community, you know that. You know, a lot of brothers are not going to therapists and stuff. I mean, there's some, not all, but there's a lot of brothers that don't. But, you know, I I, got to hold it steady for the brothers because, you know, a lot of times, though, one of the reasons we don't want to talk is because y'all jump on that emotional train so fast that we don't know how to handle it. And a lot of times, (laughs) you know, it's not always all our fault. Sometimes we just rather clam up than, you know, get hit upside the head, smack. We're not saying it's all your fault. Sometimes we need y'all to talk. Uh, and I think that's the case with Kevin because I think that like the longer this Keisha situation goes on, the more he's going to actually need to like open up. Like if this continues to span throughout this season and into next, I think he's going to start to see that like okay, maybe Gemma did that coming from a good place. Like she's not trying to push, but she definitely is concerned about my mental health. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I'm hoping that's the case, you know, because he's got a jewel with her, and you know, and that's what I was kind of saying, um, you know, while at the um, pancake house, you know, I got you, you know, you were a little upset because she ran her mouth, you know, but she had no, I mean, why wouldn't she tell her parents, you know, at some point, Kevin, you got to understand. So the parents ran their mouth. That's yeah. what Pajama said. <laughs> exactly. She yeah. can right. it. She confided in her parents, and exactly. her parents told so and so, and they ran their mouth. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. But again, we were saying that she's a good influence for him, right? He needs right. that space to be able to talk, to be able to take what you said is the emotion, but you have to express it. You can't hold it in because it's going to come out some way. Oh, definitely. Yep. And and what we've seen it is it comes out violent. Exactly. And you know what? I've seen that again this episode with Papa and Maisha. Because Papa and her were kind of like walking down the street after he had dropped Kevin's cake or whatever. But he was like in this state where he's questioning God and he's trying to get a hold of like what where he stands spiritually. And Maisha was really um a, a, like a she was a foundation for him in that space where she was very comforting and reassuring to him and willing to hear out his thoughts you know, not shoot him down for doubting God, like just saying that, you know, everybody feels that way one, at one point or another, you know, you're not wrong for doing that, but you got to work through that on your own. And, you know, I'm here for you, you know, if you need me. Can we go back to that cake for a moment? First of all, first of all, you that misspelled- That gets me off at that establishment. <laughs> hey, let me tell you. Terrible I mean, customer service. You misspelled Kevin. Now, I mean, you got to, that's a leap in service that you got to go and misspell Kevin. But and this, she had an attitude. But wait a minute. How do you, how do you fix it? You take your finger. Or something. And sc- and it just looked like a finger. Yeah. And, and just wipe off. I mean, come on. That cake should have been not dropped. It should not even have been picked up. It should have been smashed in her face. There you go. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. That was terrible customer service, and it they really had a was. Whole business uh, full of people. And you uh, see yeah. how you treating your customers? So, yeah, yeah, she was like, <laughs> "Nina needs to go back up there and demand a refund." Exactly. Yep. Exactly. Yep. But um, I don't know. I 
just think that the the young characters this episode like they show a lot of maturity especially the young women i was really proud of how the the young women this episode kind of held it down for the younger guys and and kind of just like being a a rock for them during their times of troubles yeah there's a necessary presence you know we because I, I i'm a child of the 70s grew up in the 90s it, we didn't see that example at all. It's like women and men were at war. Mm -hmm. And I think this generation needs to see the, the way we got here is not because we're at war, it's because we need each other. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, and I definitely, I always think women are a help me. And, Je and Gemma shows that with, um, with uh, Kevin. Uh, I think just Kevin has to, he has to come to grips with what's going on. Um, and open up a bit. I, I think there's some reservation. I feel as though there's a little reservation with uh, Kevin when it comes to Gemma. I'm not sure if it has to do with his friends or maybe he thinks she might be too good for him. There's something there that Kevin hasn't expressed necessarily, but I kind of figured that there's something in Kevin that isn't quite worthy of Gemma, I think. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, you know, you got to look at it too. Like he's, it, it's maybe it's a guilt thing too because he's at a point in his life where he's, you know, kind of finding his first love mm -hmm. and he can be in a very happy place, but at the same time, his sister is missing. Yeah, I, that's I a, that's exactly. That's he's conflicted. Kind of conflict. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, if, if, it really is a guilt. Like, dang, I really don't deserve to be happy right now. Like, mm -hmm. how can I be happy with this going on? So I can see how he might feel that way. And mm -hmm. then yeah. the other thing I thought about too was, you know, what did you guys think of the scene where um, Keisha basically had to negotiate with um, Omari in order to get a phone call to call Kevin at the end of the episode, but she never actually said anything on the phone. Well, that absolutely. probably was part of the negotiation. He probably yeah. said, I'll let you hear his voice, right. but you can't so say what anything. did she have to give up? Well, you know, but you know what? Me. But you know what? That was very smart of Keisha because when you have somebody that has you hostage, the thing you want to do is try to get some common common ground between you and make a phone and, call. Well, you it, get at location. Least other, you exactly. Get the, the, at least the to other records things. and everything. Right. They so hit off the towers. Right. So you try. Well, not just with the phone call because if if you can convince him that you're getting closer, you're trustworthy. more right and then he starts giving you more leeway then maybe she can get in another position where she can bust the door down get up out of there and not fall to the ground <laughs> <laughs> but you know what this reminds me of the running situation too because this is almost like the writers going against what we typically see so if you have a sister missing and you get a call and you don't hear anything, normally you would see people, their first reaction, Keisha, is this you? Exactly. He didn't have that reaction at all. Right, he was just right, like, right. whatever, who is this? Click. Right. And, I thought that was different because my expectation would be that you're grasping for anything. You're grasping for any sign of her. Yeah. Um, and so that's just another thing like running where it's almost like a missed opportunity, right? right. Mm -hmm. That's, that's a, actually a very, very good point because I know if, you know, if I had a sister and she was missing and, you know, you don't get those phone calls, those type phone calls every day. So here you get a phone call and no one's talking, you know, you save the number, you try to find out if that number, you know, if you can yeah, trace I think it. it was blocked. But it was a blocked call number and, it, it, yeah. and that would have been the, that would have been the clue right but there. Like, who is the clue? I was calling it a blocked should... number. Yeah. And Great then, point. you know, and maybe say something to, you know, your, your mom or whatever, you know, Again, I, I think there were a lot of mishaps in the writing here. And, and maybe this is the way they wanted to, to be, sh you know, this is what they want. Maybe they want us to see this like this, but. Um, well, I haven't been in the headspace that Kevin is in, but when I see a block call, I ignore it. And that's what I was thinking why I didn't register with him. Block call, a call I don't recognize, I ignore it. So that's, because, that's why when I, I mean, started, I was like, right. oh. But because you and I, you, know, we, you have a loved one that's missing. That's the right. only thing. Right. That's why I said right. I'm not in the headspace that he's in. You right. know, it would be something different if I had someone missing. Right. So. Right. But it would have made more sense since he is in that space that he would be like, is this Keisha? Like, you really right. would be on edge for every phone call. Like, this could be her. Well, I definitely so would have called it out. You're right. That was a missed opportunity there. But I yeah. was just thinking, like, 
I really, I, I hope it was nothing, you know, terribly bad that Keisha had to give up in exchange for that phone yeah. call. But this is when he said he has her calling him daddy and all this other stuff. I'm just like, and he brushing her hair and bathing her. I was like, her hair. He sexually, has he sexually assaulted her? Or we, is he? He's probably gearing up to that. And and let me say this. I And I'm not saying this because I'm a man. I'm saying this because your life really is at stake. And if you got to give up the booty just to make this man feel a little tr more trustworthy with you, do whatever you have to do to be safe. And I'm saying... <laughs> No, I mean, I, I mean, I agree with him. It's a, it's a I, 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 we, we all, we all here cringing like. <laughs> yeah, we cringing, but, but that's the, that's, that's the negotiation, right? I'm sorry. That's what, if that's what you got to do to keep living another day or two or three. Do what you got to do because help is on the way. Ronnie, we haven't seen the bottle. Help is on the way. Ronnie is, he's on point. Just like you said, Tiffany, he's the hero of this show. So. Do what but you But sometimes to do. in those situations, it's like damned if you do, damned if you don't. It's like right. nothing you can do to get out of that situation. But you know in what? In some cases, I know one thing: if you hook him up a little bit, you got you got at least a few more hours of living. You're just trying to pacify him and buy time, because I, I think I right. before That's that. All you're trying to do. And I thought what she did, you know, to hold his hand or grab his hand. Yeah, she grabbed his hand. See, mm -hmm. that's that's what I'm talking about. You know, she she. Okay. That's the that's what that street smart to get you. You know? Yeah, working the womanly wiles. Exactly. That's mm -hmm. hey, I think it becomes gotta psychological do. warfare on her behalf too. Now, yes. exactly. Yes. And, and actually, it gives her more power. You mm -hmm. see, we think we think he's taking it. No, she's not. He's giving it. She's giving the power to him. Yeah. Oh, well, once he told her the story about the woman. I mean, the look on her face that I saw to me, it seemed like there was a bit of resolve. Yeah. It, it seemed like she became more stoic. It was something in her eyes that kind of hardened. Because at first she was, you know, yeah, yeah. kind of, you know, whimpering and stuff. But when he told her that story, I was just like, I, to me, I felt like she was storing it in her mental catalog and was like, I'm going to use this to my advantage. And that's, yeah, that's a good point. Exactly what she, now she knows what she's working with. Because the, exactly. the biggest question would be, why? Why me? Why, why, why me? Right. Right. And he told her exactly why. You have the same hair. You look just like her. And yep. so... We see so this she could guy, he has a real problem. Yep, she could. Yeah. The next thing she should say, hey, can you go out and buy me a long dress that goes all the way down to my ankles? You know, <laughs> look, hi, and, and something that comes up a to the neck. Yeah, I mean, look, play that thing, because that's exactly what he's looking for. He was hurt. So, you know, he's, he's trying, play it up, girl. Play it up. Call him daddy. <laughs> <laughs> Lord. <laughs> it's horrible. It's a horrible position to be in, but at this it point, is. If you, well, if that's the case, I really hope that Kevin's wish when he blew out that candle at the end of the episode was for Keisha to be back home because she That's what I think it was. That's why I think it went off the way it did. I was like, he is wishing for her safe return home. Yeah. Yeah. She well, she needs all the wishes she can get at this point. It, it's gonna be interesting. Prayers. It's going to be interesting uh, for this next episode because there's so many ways they can go. But I hope they don't piss me off again. Come on now. I can only take them so much. <laughs> can I just say this? I want to go back to one point when we were talking about Papa and Maisha when he was um, wrestling with, uh, you know, his feelings about God and stuff. I kind of felt like that had a lot to do with what he saw with his dad and um, Camille, too. Because I think that shook his faith as well. The fact that he saw witness his own father doing the pay for play thing in the church. Yeah. Yeah. I but I think too, you know, I mean, I've had a you know, a, a pretty long walk with with Christ. But I mean, I think as you get older and you see so much, you begin oh, of to course. Ask, you yeah. know, and as he's getting older, you begin to just ask questions because, you know, growing up with Christ and then living with Christ as an adult, sometimes that, that vision gets a little blurry. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and when you're in a position that, that, that uh, Papa is in, that is having a, a father that's, a, you know, that's a, a minister or a priest or whatever he is, um, and then you see him kind of go left, you begin to question the whole mm -hmm. idea of, of uh, religion. 
and even and um the comment that Maisha made where she was talking about how her cousin had gotten shot and he was just kind of saying like how could Christ let something like that happen to her I mean she seems like she's a good person why would something like that happen to her mm -hmm. and so like I think that that's normal for for people to question like you know, if we have this this God that's looking out for us, how come so many bad things happen to people that we deem to be good? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so I think we've all been there before. Definitely. Yeah, we, we have. Mm -hmm. But on top of that, you know, having things happen around you kind of good people or not, I mean, that on top of having your father being a little shady, it doesn't help. No, mm -hmm. exactly. <laughs> But you know, I think this is the good part of it is that sometimes children are shown as accessories, but this way you get to see that these are kids and they're having their own struggles and challenges. And this mm -hmm. is where they're developing their character to, to kind of figure out who they are and how they meet these challenges. Mm -hmm. And I mm -hmm. think as a parent who's had a child, a lot of times you just see them as your child and you don't mm -hmm. see that they're actually having real life struggles, right? They're just right develop and grow into an adult human being, um, learn responsibility, and really develop character and how they meet these challenges. So that's, I think, what I like about it, because then what you do is you compare them to adults, and they have to look at that and be like, either we have good models or we have models of things not to do. You know, if they decide to do a, a, a flash forward 10 years where these kids are all grown up, we'll have the backstory on why they turned out the way they turned out. It, it all works together. And that's what? what I like about how they're not really demonizing any of these people. Like, we all have a little bit of good, all have a little bit of bad. And right. the okay. fact that they are from Chicago and it's a place that has a, a reputation for some, not some of the greatest things. I mean, it still shows these people are human and they struggle and they have a reason for why they turn out the way they do, good or bad. One thing Trig said to Jake that I kind of caught was really, what really, <laughs> um, when he asked Jake something about uh, Gemma and, and he was pretending he couldn't, you know, couldn't stand her. And he said, yeah, that's usually when you, you know, it's the opposite. You like them, yep. Yeah, when mm -hmm. you, you know, really show that you like them. And I think we mentioned that very lightly uh, last episode. And I honestly think he does. I really do. I think he likes Gemma. I, it's just that she's new. She is something he hasn't come across. But I think he's. I think he likes what he, what he doesn't know. Mm. What do you think, Luan? You got a look on your face, like. I mean, you know, I'm I'm still going back to what Lena said when she described this season. And she said this was the gayest season ever. So what the plot twist could be is that the crush is on Kevin. I don't know if they setting it up that way, but I wouldn't be surprised. They have a lot of friction all the time. Yeah, because of that. It's because of that tension, right? It's the tension. And it's those too. That so goes it, back to what yeah. I said a little earlier. What I said when I when I said something to the effect that there's just something in Kevin that I see that just either he hasn't relinquished to get to so that he could get to know Gemma, or there's a blockage somewhere in him other than the fact that his his. I don't think so. I think I don't think it's on Kevin. I'm not I, saying I, that I it know is. That. I'm saying on yeah. Gemma's part. I'm um, because if you look at it. He's the one that's isolated. He's the one that doesn't have a, a relationship. Well, so I'm not saying that's what they're going to do. I'm saying that's what they're look. It looks like they're setting this up because mm -hmm. there's tension between Jake and Kevin. He's not. They're not fighting with the other. They're not fighting with Papa. Well, I <laughs> so, you know, no, because I think I think that. Um, between Gemma and, and, and Kevin, they are the two strongest in the group uh, mm -hmm. as, as far as Jake sees, you know, uh, and, and Jake, Jake has that relationship with, um, um, with uh, Kevin. And then here comes Gemma, you know, w women do the same thing. We, women have girlfriends and then- Territorial. Just yes. possessive over the friendship. Yes. Yeah. And, and that's, that could be what we're seeing there. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's just, you know, somebody new coming in and taking time away from the time that yeah. you would have ordinarily had with um, with uh, Kevin, and not only that, but they're I mean, they're seemingly going different places in their lives. 
Like yeah. Jake is really into the streets. He's very street smart. He doesn't seem to be too interested in in uh, school, other than the fact that you know Duda got him into a better you know um, environment school wise. But Kevin is actually like intelligent. He's attracted to intellect, and and they just seem like they're like you grow up with people in your neighborhood, and it's kind of like your friends by circumstance. Mm -hmm. But as you grow older, you realize that we really don't have much in common, and you start going your separate ways. So mm -hmm. well, I, I mean. It's, it's, I I'm not arguing that they should do it. I'm saying that's what it looks like to me because mm -hmm. of the way that they have Jake set apart. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's the, and there's a million different ways they could take that. Yeah, and that. but it is, but that's a good point. He's the one that's kind of floundering. Mm -hmm. yeah, I got a, I got a prediction. As as a life path as far as him showing uh, any kind of passion in anything, just really trying to find his way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I have a prediction for for Jake because you know he's already seen two beatdowns, and I don't think either one set well with him. Um, I honestly think he's you're going to see a change in him. Uh, he's because we we have seen that explosion of intellect uh, from a p political standpoint. Uh, I I think he's he's getting schooled uh, in many different facets uh, in this program. So I expect to see a change in Jake. I don't think, I think the street thing is he, he'll eventually start showing us that that's not what he wants. That's how mm. I feel about it. I think okay. he's going to become a better dude. Yeah, exactly. I, 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 yeah. Yeah. That you know true. what? I that think you're right. True. That's very true. You know, he could become what Duda really needs to be. You know, mm -hmm. Duda, Duda's setting his ways, and I don't know if we can teach that old dog uh, new tricks, but <laughs> Jake... On the other hand, he could become a much better Duda. Good points. You guys have any other predictions for the, the next episode or the remainder of the season? I mean, we already threw a few out there about Ronnie. We, we think he's going to eventually work through his grandma's death, and that's going to motivate him even more. Um, I can definitely see that. I, I think Keisha will make it out of this situation. Mm -hmm. um, very damaged, but I think she'll make it. Um, I'm trying to think of anything else. I don't think I have too many other predictions. I kind of just like to watch the show and, and be surprised by it. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm I'm enjoying it. I I really like the way um Dre is ride or die for Nina too. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Because when she said she had already had the party set up and everything, like she yeah, she's yeah, holding I, it down for her. Right, I definitely agree with that. Okay. Well, thank you guys so much for watching. Um, we definitely enjoyed this conversation this week. Um, please make sure that you like and subscribe to our channel. Uh, click the notification bell so that you get notified every time we post. And also drop your comments in the section below and let us know how you felt about the, um, the episode and any predictions that you have for future episodes. Um, we are also online at the Spot Real Talk on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. So give us a follow on all of those platforms and we'll be sure to follow back. Um, do you guys have any closing remarks before we head out? I was just going to say, if um, they would like to be a guest on the show, please let us know that, too. Oh, yeah. Please, definitely. definitely. And we will get in touch with you. But uh, we're always looking for guests. So that being said. All right. Oh, I think we're going to go. call it a night. Yeah, we're going to hit back the same place next week and see if I'm still pissed off or will I be <laughs> easily <laughs> satisfied. <laughs> All right, thank you guys for watching. Bye. 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 Bye.